What I'm going to talk about today is uh, a little challenge I had from a client. So just imagine a little bit, you've got a new project and the aim is you're going to create a set of SharePoint sites for a client and there's going to be all sorts of lists backed up with site columns, content types, all that, all those good things you've got in SharePoint. Unfortunately, you're probably thinking now, great PMP PowerShell, export all that, can fly it up to the client's environment nice and easily, but this client you're working with doesn't allow PowerShell in their environment. Yep, that was a fun thing to find out in the early stages of stuff. So we had to get all these sites created, our dev tenant, and then try and find a way to move those across. So you've got your build out of your SharePoint, no PowerShell, all has to be manual. So anything you create, you've got to recreate from scratch. Plus, they wanted these kind of to be templated sites that they could use for lots of different departments. So we had to give them a set of instructions so that power users could then go and recreate stuff. And yes, you can go thing. I don't know about you. I hate doing documentation. I hate when you have a list of columns, you're going to type them all out. And every time you need to make a change, you're going to go back and say, right, I've changed it in this site. Have we changed it there? Have we changed it there? I just don't like doing it. It's why I love the PMP provisioning stuff, um, because you can just recreate that. So I started to think about how could we actually script up the creation of that? Came up with a few options, think about we could pull the stuff out from CSOM, use PMP PowerShell, you know, you've got the XML, we could just give them the XML and write stuff from that, but they're not going to like that. We could put it out to CSV, start to think about it. you could put in text files or even Word documents, but gradually bottomed out to think about using PMP PowerShell and Markdown. I, I did actually start scripting my own thing as a console app with, with the CSOM side, but I was like, th this is nuts. This could be something useful for other people. And I could go and spin up a nice new GitHub project or because PMP PowerShell is open source and there was all sorts of good things going on there, I could put in a pull request to that. And that felt like a much better way to go. So I, I went ahead and I have to admit, I hadn't kept up fully with what was happening with all the core implementations and looking at that at, at the time. I think I was it was around November, December time. So it was the early previews of the PMP framework. And I uh, had been chatting to Paul Bullock. So I was having a look at some of the PMP core stuff. What's great now is you're seeing the very latest. There are green ticks all over the place. So you can see all the details from from this. I can see someone saying, um, I thought you couldn't use the PMP PowerShell. So we were creating all the sites in our environment and then exporting, taking that out from there and putting into their environment afterwards. So we could build it out all locally, do all the development using PMP, using PowerShell, but then to actually apply them back into their environment, we had to do things manually. So after a bit of going through the code and working out what could take place, uh, I realized that we could do stuff with the PMP provisioning and where that bit of being output to XML or um, you can out output it as a .pmp file. I thought, actually, if we could export all the definition as markdown files, then actually we could point the same PMP provisioning and get out an output. So I mocked up in Word a little bit of a breakdown of what we needed. And let me flip over to some uh, definition. Here you can see a, a breakdown of, uh, a, of a site that I put together. So you can see you get all sorts of stuff as Markdown, but those of you who love Markdown are, are reading that nicely. If you're using VS Code, you've got the preview templates. You can actually look at things there. You can see we get the name of the template. And if you put a nice template ID in there, you'll get that as an output. Uh, you can see we list out the groups that have been associated in there, the administrators, a few details on the navigation. I start off with a list of site columns, so a, a definition in the table. Then for each of those site columns, very easy to read views of that. And the intention was that you could get all these things. You could go down column by column and it's following the same as you get from the UI that you can actually see what's going on. So you can hand this doc they can create that demo columns, comments column. They know its type. Um, we've put in there the internal name because we knew we wanted to have it. People when they create it and then save it differently. Oops, I shouldn't have double click there. So we, we've put internal name, display name and details, but then all the others, we've tried to keep the formatting the same as you'd see from the UI. 
And so you can see we've got a list of columns, any content types I've created. It lists which columns are there for the content types and it exports the list, the details that come out. Uh, it's got the list of each of those that exist on there. Uh, list when we look at, for example, the demos one, it's got the description, whether it's on quick launch, et cetera, et cetera. So it really is helped there. And being like this, I can do control A, uh, oh, my word's closed, but the, the intention is you can do control A, copy this, paste it into Word, apply your formatting, then you've got a nice formatted document that you can hand over clients at the end of it. Um, because this is the PMP call, I am going to go into a little bit of the code just to, if anyone else wants to expand on this or take some of the areas, but you've got three key parts of this. You're looking at the providers within that. There then is a formatter that does that conversion into the type. So whether it's XML, Markdown, JSON within there, and then there's the writers. So the writers will take up each of the individual bits that write up the components, such as the content types and areas, different areas like that. So you can see it's a little bit messy. The first time I looked at it, I, I probably went, yeah, uh, was the, the word I'd use on there. But once you dig into it, it's not too bad. So if you start on the formatter, you can see that there is a two provisioning template. Uh, oh, it's not that one. Sorry, it's the two formatted template, and it it brings up a set of writers. And these different writers, when you expand and look on there on the markdown, there's one for each of the different types. So whether it's the base properties, content types, features, list instances, and if we go into lists of those, I'm just using uh, system that I am writing out lines. So it's just literally writing out the markdown line by line with a different format, looping through, for example, in this case, the, the set of lists and just writing out the details one by one where you've got groups such as the uh, content type bindings, then it's adding uh, a for loop for each binding. And sometimes we're writing into sub formatters within there, but it's once you get into the flow of things, it's quite easy to add the different details and things onto there. So if you do want to use it, there is, uh, oops, need to go on to the other one. Um, if you do want to use it, it's just using the get PMP site template. So if you if you haven't used the new core version, slight change of format from the PMP provisioning now, and it's got an example on there, get PMP site template, and you just do output to template.md. So if I bring up, you can see I've created the one there. Let's create template two. It does exactly the same as if you were exporting it out to an XML file. But instead of the XML file, you get the markdown file that you can go and use bits from. And because it's the same, you can pass handlers to that. So if you just want to get a list of site columns, if you want to put some filters in there, then you can put your different filters and just bring back particular lists or other items you want in there. All the capabilities you can get from extracting PMP site templates, you can get with this markdown, um, the same format with the markdown as well, because it's all using the same mechanism. Now, What's next? I think it's the answer. Uh, I haven't put all the handlers in there. So things like pages, I haven't catered for those. I, I think there's some other bits. I'm trying to remember the, the other one I haven't done on there. I haven't done every single element. And even within things like the site columns, some of the specific scenarios it doesn't necessarily cater for at the moment. Would like to fill that out. I'd like to put a bit more ability to add a simple filter. So it, it, get it to filter out all the default content types and all the default list templates and things like that. So if you just want to extract out what's new to things, then it would be easy to do that. Most importantly, I'd love you all to give it a try and let me know what else you would like to see. What would be useful? How, would you like different formatting? How how is it used? Are there different scenarios that you could see from it? Um, so please get your hands dirty with it and let me know what you think. Also, I'd encourage you all get involved in PMP PowerShell and all the PMP core work. Uh, I'm certainly planning later this year, uh, once this horrendous project our mum's working on and we can get the kids back to school and get bit back to uh, normalcy of getting more hands on with all the PMP core stuff. But please do. There's so many welcoming people there who can come and help you through it. Uh, so, yeah, get involved. Back to you, Paolo. Thank you very much, Kevin. Great work. Uh... <music>